Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin Political Action Committee, www.defendingwisconsin.org. Uh, I am reporting here from my apartment at the moment. What I We have a few bits of news for you today. Uh, the first of which is a story that was uh, broken by PolitiScoop, um, or pieced together by PolitiScoop. Apparently, uh, although Scott Walker had said that he, uh, that he hasn't uh, had any plans of financial martial law or dissolving Milwaukee County, uh, apparently he's been wanting to dissolve Milwaukee County for a long time. So we're going to show you two video clips, and this is from a 2009 conference um, in front of the Greater Milwaukee uh, Commerce or Greater Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce, or GMC. I'm not sure exactly what that stands for, nor do I really care. It's a high, uh, heavy, heavy business organization, uh, much like everyone who associates with Walker. Uh, so with that being said, uh, the first thing is he's bragging about uh, cutting the wages and cutting the quality of city employees in the city of Milwaukee. And then the next clip he goes on to talk about, um, well, to talk about dissolving Milwaukee County completely. And this has been something that's been on his mind for quite some time. And so it goes to show a pattern. The second thing is uh, one of our friends at the Capitol had overheard a conversation, presumably between Jeff Fitzgerald and someone else, uh, talking about uh, the martial law. And he was asking, I don't know how Ed Garvey figured out about the martial law. It must have been, uh, it was one of, it yeah. must have been someone on the inside that informed them. Maybe it was Jason. Yeah. So uh, we're looking to get a hold of this Jason guy. Uh, if you watch this video, uh, then you can feel free to contact me uh, using personal means. And the third piece of news, uh, the third piece of, or the, actually there's four pieces of news. The third piece of news is Walker, it has begun, his campaign has begun per uh, one of, uh, per an informant, uh, his campaign has begun to solicit funds for a recall. Uh, they said they know a recall is coming of him, they're quite confident of it, and they need his supporters to back him now. And so uh, pay attention to his uh, campaign finance reports coming out uh, during the next election cycle. He's trying to uh, solicit more donations because he knows a recall is coming, which is actually a pretty smart move because I think we all know a recall is coming. And the fourth piece of news, and perhaps the most important, um, the Government Accountability Board has determined that there was no irregularities in Waukesha County. Now, if you look at their report and the steps that they took, they didn't go into much detail. So with that being said, uh, it is not a thorough enough investigation, and it just goes to show that we can't trust the GAB. We're going to wait a couple days. If uh, Kloppenberg requests to recount, then we'll wait and see where that goes. If not, we'll give a couple days for the feds to step in. If we don't have resolution, then we're going to have to start a revolution. And so uh, with that being said, uh, nonviolent and non-destructive, but we're going to need to uh, step up the ante a little bit. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, go to www.defendingwisconsin.org slash revolution dot php you need to have the php in there otherwise uh, it won't work and um, feel free to watch the video we also have uh, coverage from the song circle Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin Political Action Committee www.defendingwisconsin.org have a wonderful day folks. of this year we will have a temporary in the sense that it's temporary for this year and not to the future but a 35 hour work week uh, that is something that looking with our attorneys I can do without a change to our collective bargaining agreement with our unions and I can do without county board approval I could just do it um, so in uh, almost every case you're gonna see hours change typically uh, places uh, will start an hour or half an hour late 830 instead of 8 and close a half an hour early at 430 few exceptions the zoo the parks other places that generate revenue of course we want that revenue to come in so that's going to continue uh, but for all of our areas minus uh, those who provide direct care for public safety or for public health. Uh, all other areas will have a 35-hour work week, and essentially it ends up being an hour a day uh, for all phases uh, to the start of the 2010 uh, budget year. So we found ways to do that. Here are a couple examples of that. Uh, over the past seven years, we've reduced our workforce uh, by over 20 percent. Uh, when you look, and you know when I've talked to you before about our our uh, benefit packages, in particular, whether it's pensions or health care, with the legacy costs that we have, uh, they're pretty parallel to the big three in Detroit. And so for us, every time we change the number of employees that we have, either through attrition, which we had in 2002 and 2004, or more recently through contracting out for services, 
uh, every time, even if we replace them with another body, but it's not a body, body with the same fringe benefit rate, we reduce our legacy costs and reduce our overall cost to county government. So that's helped. Uh, we've done a number of things with health care and with uh, uh, the pension. The next slide shows things like our wellness program, uh, certainly employee health care costs because of working with our county board. They helped us create a division that honed in on that, saved us about $15 million in administration costs there. Uh, certainly other things that we've done for the pension help us not so much today, but help us over time. So some of the things we did years ago are starting to pay off in terms of changing uh, the backdrops, capping those off, changing the rule of 75, uh, making other changes out there. Something we talked about for years and finally just was able to accomplish this, uh, this current year, that is pension obligation bonds. I know many involved with the uh, GMC's task force and the state task force talked about that for years. We tried to do it a couple years ago. We finally got it through. That will help us uh, manage those pension costs for years to come. And I see Jeff Stone here helped us in the legislature with that. Um, and more recently, it's not on the slide, but you all saw probably uh, about a month ago, uh, we uh, uh, achieved a settlement in the pension lawsuit with uh, an, our actuarial firm that advised the county back nine years ago. Uh, some may have said $45 million didn't reflect your total damage model. It didn't, but as all of you in business know, getting $45 million in a settlement uh, at a time like this uh, is quite remarkable. In fact, if you measure that, uh, that is, to our knowledge, the largest settlement with an actuarial company in the country right now. Uh, we applied all that after uh, attorney's fees and other fees are applied. It's a little bit over $30 million. We'll go directly into the pension fund uh, for unfunded liabilities. That was wired to us literally two days after we reached the settlement. So even if we could have gotten more, had we, and it's still a roll of the dice, uh, had we won in a trial, at the conclusion of the trial, the reality is it would have been tied up probably for years in court. And so when you take the actual interest earned on the money we're going to put in the market now, and I come back, Julia, is that um, I know that Julia and Shell and I have talked about this before. Certainly in our mind, uh, maybe not as an ultimatum to the board and to others about every single item, 100% of what we have in this and this document is a financial reform, but certainly if the lion's share of the things that we talked about in terms of those four categories of reform that we need are not enacted, for us, we've been looking for almost the last two years at an alternative uh, for county government. Here's the tease. Um, we've looked extensively. I know many others have looked at this, but we believe if they don't, they being the county board, the state legislature, and the governor don't give us the tools to act on those major reforms, it's probably time for us to seriously consider looking at the possibility of eliminating county government um, and replacing it with something uh, better that's a combination of moving assets to the state, moving it to municipal governments, and doing things in other ways that totally redefine uh, county government. We're the only county in the state that's fully incorporated. Uh, there's 19 municipalities, not one bit of land in this county that's not either a, a, an incorporated village or city. Uh, as each day goes by, to me, it makes more and more sense to question why it is we duplicate services we could otherwise provide by those 19 communities and maybe a separate parks and cultural district and looking at a, a transportation-related district and leave it at that. So that's the tease for the future. We'll be back. Thank Jeremy Ryan reporting from Defending Wisconsin Political Action Committee, www.defendingwisconsin.org. We have a song circle going on today. We've got some new songs here today. We also have some sort of convention going on up here. the book. 